Good morning, everybody. Why don't you stand and worship with us this morning? I have to have you sing extra loud. I picked up a little bit of a cold this week. So if I have to turn and cough, you're just going to have to forgive me this morning. But let's worship together. Thank you, Jesus, that we serve you victorious. Amen. 
I'm going to let you be seated today. We've got quite a few announcements, but we want to welcome you in the service today and those that are worshiping with us online. Thank you for joining us and being part of this. Um, Thursday night, ladies, it's ladies' night out here at the church. We're going to meet at 6 o'clock, pizza and a movie night. Come, it's going to be up in the foyer here, so we will, we will not be doing the steps if that's a problem for you. So make sure you sign up out in the foyer so we have a count on how to buy the pizza. We'd like you to join us for that. Another day, Saturday, August 6th. Now that sounds a long ways away, but it's really not. So that is a work day, an all-church work day starting at 9 o'clock. The goal is to finish the nursery. Won't that be wonderful? So come help us. And then, ladies, I know that you're like, well, I don't run a saw and I don't do this, I do that. But you know what? We sure know how to dust things down, don't we? We can get that done. And then remember, August 14th, we're doing an outside service down at Hillcrest Park, Shelter A. And following our morning worship service outside, we're going to have our church picnic. So uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, drinks will be provided. You bring a salad or a cake or uh, something alongside that to share with that. And then in the month of August, on Wednesday night, we're going to change up Wednesday night totally for August. And we'd like you to join us. So let me share with you what's happening in August. This is on Wednesday night. It will happen in the sanctuary. So on August 3rd, Adam and Amanda Lee are going to be sharing their mission trip with us that we all helped them go on. We prayed with them through on August 10th. Jonathan Olson is going to be sharing with us what God's been doing with him this summer in his mission field. August 17th is going to be a hymn sing. August 24th, Jason Poppin will be sharing what God's been doing with him in a ministry this weekend. Isn't that exciting? That's our teenagers coming out of this church going into ministry. And that's exciting when you see that begin to happen. On August 31st, we're going to do a movie night here at the church, and it's called Family Camp. So it's kind of a comedy. You'll enjoy that. So when you grab a bulletin today, all of that is in your bulletin. Take it home. Mark down your calendar. Put it in your cell phone. Do what you need to do. We've got lots on the docket. But it's exciting to kind of be up and running again when we've not been full, full speed ahead. So that will be fun. But we have something special today. And I think there's a picture coming up. Oh, pastor's birthday is this week. So I'm going to, we're going to sing happy birthday to him as one of the board members come. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Good morning, everyone. Pastor, could you come up here for a moment? We have a card for you and a, a gift inside. Hopefully, you and Kathy can have a nice evening out with that. So, we, uh, we just wish you God's richest blessings for the coming year, and, and we know He has big things planned for you. So, anyhow. Happy birthday, Pastor. <laughs> Would like to pray with you. If... Good. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you so much for Pastor Gary and the leadership position you have placed him in and in this church body, Lord. We just uh, pray your richest blessings over him, Lord, on his special day this week and and for the coming year ahead, Lord, uh, we pray your leading and guidance over him as he as he leads this church body. Uh, it's going to be an eventful year, and uh, we just want your will to be done in, in everything we do here, Lord. We pray, uh, as I said, for the leading and guidance for him, Lord. We pray for protection over him and over Kathy. And over their entire family, Lord, keep a hedge of protection about them that no no harm would come to them. Lord, and we just yeah, we want to 
speak healing in the name of Jesus over Pastor Gary, over this uh, burning pain, irritation in his arms, Lord. We just pray for your healing touch. Father, we don't know what the cause is, but we know you do, and we know you know the answer for it. Lord, and we just pray that to come into being here right now, Father. Oh, your, your word promises that by your stripes we are healed, and we, we claim that promise right now on behalf of Pastor. Lord, once again, we, we thank you. We thank you in all things, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Appreciate our pastor one more time this morning. Why don't you stand and worship with us again this morning? I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations.
physical or spiritual, financial, Lord. Have your way, Lord. And they will be filled.
will belong to you forever. Holy, holy, for all eternity, it is a name that reigns above all others, Jesus Christ, the King. Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful this morning we are in the presence of the King? Majesty. Worship His majesty. King of kings, Lord of lords. His name is above any other. The Bible says there's coming a time when every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But we're here this morning to do that right now. We just want to uphold and lift up the name of Jesus, the name that is so holy that at the name of Jesus the demons have to flee. At the name of Jesus there's healing, there's peace, there's deliverance at the name of Jesus. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer this morning in the name of Jesus and know that if we ask, we will receive. And God is faithful. Father, this morning is such an honor to once again come together and know that we are in the presence of the King of Kings. To know that you are here because you said wherever two or three agree or if come together and gather together in your name that you will be with them also and God we know you're here and we thank you for the assurance of your presence and Lord we know that you have something special for each and every one of us because we're not here by accident we are here by providence it is your will that we have gathered together this morning We ask, God, that you would move by your Spirit in a very real, a very special, and a very powerful way. I pray, Lord, that you would touch hearts and lives. I pray that you would touch bodies, that, God, you would just do a mighty work, whether in the sanctuary or those that are viewing online, that they would receive from you what you would have for them. And so, Lord, we give ourselves to you. And we ask that we would receive from you what you would have for us. Lord, we open ourselves. We yield ourselves to you that we might be the vessels through which your spirit might come into and fill and flow through. God, just be with us now. May your anointing rest upon your word and upon the ears of your people that your name will be glorified and you will be exalted Above all else, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord bless you this morning. You may be seated. Again, we want to just echo what has already been stated, and that is we want to welcome you. And welcome to the church this morning. Those that are viewing online, we want to welcome you. And we're just believing God to do some great and some wonder, uh, wonderful and some mighty things within our midst. I do want to say thank you to the church for um, recognizing my birthday. You know, there was something that came to mind as I was thinking of my birthday. Somebody has made statement, and I've heard it, and I haven't fully recognized it, but there is a traumatic experience that takes place when you turn 50 years old. And I have come to realize that that is true. At 50 years old, time passed, that uh, there are some experiences. I have far reached uh, the age of 50. We have a daughter that is 49, so I hope I'm over 50. So, uh, um, But thank you so much. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. And we count it an honor to be serving in this church. You're such a blessing to us. And we just love and appreciate each and every one of you. And and uh, we just give God glory and honor. We remember you every morning in our prayers that God will be with you and will minister to you in this time in which we live. We're living in some 
exciting and some very um, fearful times if you would let fear grab a hold of our hearts and our lives, of which we don't want to do. But there are a lot of voices that are crying out in our world, crying for our attention, crying out to distract, crying out to immobilize us from doing what God would want us to do. But in the midst of all of these voices, there is a voice that is still speaking, and that is the voice of the Lord. God is still speaking. And that's what I want to share with you this morning is the fact that God is speaking. The question is, we know that God is speaking according to the Word of God. We know that He is speaking in various manners of which we will touch on this morning. And we know that He is directing His attention to us. And so we know He's speaking. The question is, are we listening? And do we hear? Are our ears tuned to the voice of God? That when God would speak to us, we would be like Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, it says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God was, had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord as the, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son said, Eli, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know that the Lord no, the Lord, the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized it was the voice of the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there, calling at another time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Now, I wonder sometimes if we hear the repeated voice of God and we have to come to the point of acknowledging the voice that is speaking into our hearts by the Spirit and we yield of ourselves unto that voice that is speaking and saying, Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. And I want to challenge each and every one of us this morning in these times in which we're living in, we need to hear the voice of God. We need to hear the voice of God because, as I said, there's all kinds of voices that are crying out for our attention, all kinds of voices of what is right, what is wrong, and the ways and the directions to go and, and what to do. But there is one voice that is sure and one voice that will bring us into victory, into being that finding that place of fulfillment and peace in our lives. And that's the voice of the Lord. I'm reminded of another individual in the book of Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, we read concerning the account of Moses. Exodus 3, beginning with verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire and yet it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to Moses from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals from the place where you are standing is holy ground. 
Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their, their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I am come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them from up out of the land into the good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Debusites. And now the cry of the Israel Lord has reached me. Israel has reached me. And I have seen the way of the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it will be as I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship the God of Moses. And finally, God, or Moses said to, to God, Who can I say sent me? But notice verse 14. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Folks, that is a mandate that God has given to us. And we can just reiterate what he is saying to Moses. And we can say God is giving us a call. And it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God is saying, go. And we say, well, who can we say sent me? And God can respond the way that he responded to Moses, to Moses and say that I am who I am has sent you. And so when we go and we hear the voice of God, we can know that we hear our hearing from the I am. Just as God has moved in the past, God is moving in the present. And we can count on it. God moved in the past with Moses. He moved with God and with um, Samuel. He is moving then and he is moving in the present. God has not changed. He is still speaking to his people. The one who revealed himself to Moses, the great I am, the eternal, the self-existent, the infinite, the all-powerful, the all-knowing, God is still the same. He is our God, and he is the God who is calling us unto himself to yield ourselves and to say, Speak, Lord, thy servant is listening. God is still speaking to his people today. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom all also he made the universe. But know this, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets in various ways. But God is now speaking to us by his son. God is speaking. God is speaking. Henry Blackaby and Claude King wrote a book, a very interesting book, a good book. I read it uh, some time ago entitled Experiencing God. And they wrote this. When God spoke, it was usually unique to the individual. When God spoke, the person was sure that God was speaking. When God spoke, the person knew what God said. When God spoke, this was an encounter with God. And that's where we are when God speaks into our lives. We are, in, we are engaging in encounter with the great I Am. God, according to Moses... And according to Exodus chapter 33, the first part of verse 11, it says, The Lord would speak to Moses face to face at one speaks to a friend. Now, we might be saying, well, I've never heard God speak to me face to face. 
And I don't know if you've ever heard the audible voice of God. I can't honestly say I've ever heard the audible voice of God. But I can tell you one thing. I've heard God. I've heard God in the various manners in which he speaks. And he speaks in different ways, in different manners. But he spoke to Moses face to face. And at this time as he was speaking to Moses, that he knew that he was in the presence of God. And this is one thing that we can know that he was sure of. He was sure that it was God speaking because he said, I am. He was certain exactly what God was saying. And he was going to experience this encounter with God, even as Blackaby and King had written in their book. Jesus put it this way in John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And so this morning, I am is speaking. He is speaking to you and he is speaking to me. And are we going to be like Samuel of old and saying, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Are we going to turn a deaf ear and to say, Well, this is just something that is happening. It's not my, it's in something in my own. It's not real out. In my mind, it's not reality, but yet it's a voice of God that is prompting you and inquiring of you to do that which he has called you to do. And are we willing to submit ourselves and surrender ourselves into saying, God, here I am, send me. It's the way it was when Isaiah, Isaiah heard the voice of God and he said, Lord, here am I, send me, use me. Let me be used for your glory. I remember when I was a sophomore in high school, kneeling at an altar at a camp meeting, a youth camp meeting in Hungry Horse, Montana, as I was seeking God and just wanting to hear from God. And there was that distinct call that God had put on my life. And it was the voice of God that told me. It was not an audible voice. But there was something within my spirit where I knew and there was not a doubt whatsoever in my mind that I was hearing from God. And it was, he was saying, go and call into the calling of ministry that I placed you in. And it was that night at the altar when I was a sophomore in high school that I say, yes, Lord, speak. Your servant is hearing. And what it is doing in the day in which we live is a continuation of the voice that spoke then. It was the I am then and it is the I am now that is still speaking in my heart and in my life. And he is still speaking in your heart and your life as you yield unto him. And you will turn an attentive ear into the things and in the voice of God and the manners in which he speaks. To all mankind, God is speaking in our world today. How does God speak? Well, first of all, God speaks to us through creation. Have you ever heard it said? I know I've said it. I sure wish God would write it in the sky because then I would really know that it's really God. I have good news for you. He's already done it. He's already done it. He's already written his voice in the sky. We read over in Psalm 19, verses 1 and 2, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands day after day. They pour, they pour forth speech night after night. They reveal not knowledge. God is speaking through creation. It doesn't take long to recognize that we serve an awesome God, a God who is omnipotent, a God who is almighty when we stand in the vastness of the mountain ranges. I remember as a child going up into the Rocky Mountains in Colorado and we'd go fishing up in the mountains and we would look at the vastness of the mountain range and the beauty of the mountains and and we would just be struck in awe that this didn't just happen, that there was a creator who made it come to pass. And then it was that time that we took note, yes, God, you do exist. You do exist. God will speak to us 
not only in the mountain range, but in the vastness of the universe. When you look above the universe and all that the universe declares, there is a God who is a creator, a God who brought it into existence, and that is God speaking of His of His being and of His presence. There is a starlit sky. You look up in the sky, and the millions and the thousands of of Scar stars that are twilighting in the sky and we can look up and say it is God. God is manifesting himself in creation or you can go in to hear the mighty ocean waves as they rumble against the shore and you can sit in awe saying there is a power that is beyond the, mount, the ocean waves. It is a power of God and it's a beauty of creation and all of these things it is God speaking God speaking but are we listening are we hearing what God is saying in Romans chapter 1 verses 18 through 20 Paul says that the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness since they may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power, His divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. And they could say, I didn't know there was a God looking creation. He is saying, I am revealing myself in creation. I have revealed myself in all of the beauty and all of the majesty and all of the awesomeness of creation. And that is my communication with you that you can know that the I am has spoken. God speaks to us through circumstances. We all have circumstances that lead us into various directions within our lives. He shows us one thing, that life is very brief, that we are not in control. And that's sad, uh, sometimes hard to admit. I'm not in control. God has control, and he leads us into circumstances to help us recognize that we are not in control, that he is in control. And so he speaks to us in circumstances. Circumstances like earthquakes, weather patterns, pa or things like wars and rumors of war, pestilences, and other things that come in our way as circumstances that will lead us and direct us and cause us to get attention upon God. And many times God uses a crisis or a circumstance within our life to get us to listen to him. Because sometimes it's the only way we'll listen to God. I've heard some, well, one individual had said, and it was um, a lady in one of our churches said that she developed back pain. All of a sudden had no idea, went into the doctor, was hospitalized, flat on her back. And she said this. She said, that was at that time that God got my attention. And I heard from God of what God was wanting to do in my life. But she said it had to be this circumstance that led me into hearing what God is saying, no matter what the situation might be. If it's God laying us on our backs, or if it's God leading us in a direction or another direction, we can tune our ear into the voice of God and saying, Speak, Lord, thy servant is listening. C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks to us in our conscience, but he shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to, raise, uh, to rouse a deaf world. Circumstances, crisis, pain is God's method in rousing a deaf world. God speaks to us through circumstances. God speaks to us through Christ. First John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then jumping down to verse 14. 
and the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. God is speaking to us through His Son. You see, Jesus has really become the full, final full revelation of God. If we hear Jesus, we hear God. And God is not playing games any longer. I believe that we are coming into the time where we need to get to awake and we need to be alert of what God is doing within our world because we know that in the age that we are living in, we need to hear from God. We need directive. We need some directives in within our life that we might follow in the path that God has set before us. And he has revealed to us his son, Jesus Christ, and he's speaking to us. And he is saying, I'm right here with you. What did he say in the scriptures? He said, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. He said, I will be with you at all times. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. It is the I am who is saying, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. And if I spoke to Moses, if I spoke to Samuel, you can know that God will speak to you and God will speak to me. But we have to hear him. We have to listen to the voice of God and to say, God, speak. Your servant is listening because Jesus is saying, I am right here. And if you want to God to speak to you, turn in a red letter edition of your Bible and read the words in the red. That's God speaking to you. That is the word of God. That is Jesus speaking we're in the red letter edition. It's the word that Jesus is saying and Jesus is speaking. And when Jesus speaks, God speaks because he is God. And of course, in that note, God speaks to us through the word, through the Bible. The Bible really is a measuring stick of the divine revelation or of God speaking to us and has ordered that that we come to the recognition that the Word of God is very viable. It is very important within our lives to operate within our lives and to fulfill the purpose for which it is intended. And did you realize that when you hold this book in your hands, you're holding the written voice of God. God is speaking to you through this Word. God is trying to say something to you in your life and God is wanting to get attention and direction within your life. And so when we read the word of God, we are hearing the voice of God and we can be sure it is God's word. It is closed. And when we come to the word of God, there can be nothing that is added, neither can it be subtracted. We have many in the world today would say, well, I don't think that that's really what it means when you read the Bible. I don't think that's what it means, and this is really what it means. Folks, you can't change what the Word of God says. You can't add to it. You cannot take away for it. And if, if, if it is, thus saith the Lord, it is, thus saith the Lord. There's no deviation away from it. It is God's Word, and God's Word is unchanging. God's Word is infallible. God's Word is authoritative. God's Word is exactly that, God's Word. And He speaks to us through the Word of God. And when the Bible speaks, God speaks. Notice Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spiral, our spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of our heart. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then and finally, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So what is all of this saying as we uh, bring it all together? It is saying God is speaking and God is speaking through His Word. And the question is, can we hear? And are we listening to what God says? I remember we had, and I've used this probably before, but we had a situation in a Sunday school class in one of our churches and we were reading scripture and somebody read a scripture and they were bringing out, you know, as it was being discussed and someone in the, in the, um, in the crowd of the Sunday school class made this statement. Well, I know that's what it says, but that's not what it means. That's dangerous. When we try to put words, our words in God's word, and we try to fill up God's word with our ideas and our theologies and our, uh, and our uh, philosophies, and we try to impact others with our word in comparison to the word of God, we are going to be misleading. We are going to be misguided in our own lives because God speaks through his word. And as God speaks through his word, there is another agent that is involved in God speaking to us through Jesus, God speaking to us through his word. It is that God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I read, I guess I heard a, a, a message just uh, not too long ago. It said, you know, you don't hear much about the Holy Spirit anymore in our churches. You hear about God the Father, you hear about Jesus the Son, but you don't hear a lot about Holy Spirit. But when you realize the Holy Spirit is one of the triune, part of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and this is a, a one being, one being, God speaking to us through His Son, God speaking to us through His Word, now God speaking to us by His Spirit. And the role of the Holy Spirit, why did the Holy Spirit come? He came to glorify Jesus. He came not to talk about himself, but he came to testify to what Jesus was saying and to enable us to understand and to obey the word of God. John chapter 16, verses 13 through 14. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will speak on, not on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known unto you. It's very clear. Jesus has sent his Holy Spirit. He said, it is expedient. It is important that I go away because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. But he said, when I go away, go into Terry in Jerusalem and tell you be endued with power from on high and the Spirit of God will come upon you. They went and they tarried in Jerusalem and Pentecost was ushered into the universe as the Spirit of God came with a rushing sound of wind and tongues of fire lighting upon on all of them and the church was breathed into existence at this time and the Holy Spirit took up his abode not in tabernacles or temples or even ch church buildings the Holy Spirit abides within you and he with abides within me and now what his purpose is is to testify what Jesus is saying to us and to re is to make it real within our hearts and our lives that we can know and we can understand what God is saying in our lives. But he is speaking to us by his spirit. This is important to us because Jesus is speaking by his Holy Spirit. Something important to realize is that when the spirit of God is speaking, he will never, never contradict the Word of God. 
The Holy Spirit will never contradict the Word of God. And you can have all kinds of far-fledged prophecies by a prophet, a so-called self-named proclaimed prophet. But if his prophecy does not confirm to the Word of God, folks, it is not of God because God is not going to set himself against the Holy Spirit and against the Spirit operating in our life. And when God speaks to us by the Holy Spirit, whether it be in prophecy or whatever other means he uses, it will always coincide with the written word of the living God. He will not alter it. He will not change it. He will always, always see to it that the Holy Spirit and the Word of God will always line up and not be misunderstood. And so He speaks to us by the Spirit. And last of all, God speaks to us through the church. Why did God establish the church in the beginning on the day of Pentecost? Because God had a vehicle that he was going to re use to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God is speaking through the church. That's why Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He is giving us a mandate as a body of believers, as individual Christians, as individual believers. Is he has given us a mandate to go into all the world and preach the, wor the gospel. Why? Because God speaks through the church. God speaks through the teaching. God speaks through the preaching. God speaks through the lives that have been changed by the power of God. God speaks through the church. That's why it is so important to find that church is a very important part of our schedule and our activities because this is the opportunity to God speak to us not only through God, but God speaking to you through others and us being spoken to by you is what God would, would speak through you into our lives. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 and 15 says, How then can they call on the one who they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Verse 17, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. And that is the vehicle that God is using in our world today. It's through the church. We are those that are implementing the message that God has given to us. And we are the voice of God crying in our, will, in our wilderness today. We are the ones crying out to repent and be saved. Come into the fullness of salvation. Know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. To know that we are living in the closing days of time. We are living in the last days. And the days are drawing closer and closer to an end. And we can see signs all around us. The signs are so real. The signs are so um, made known in the Word of God. And God prophesied clear back in the book of Ezekiel of things that are now beginning that take place. And they are signs of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is Jesus saying to us? Church, be ready. Church, be ready, because you don't know the hour, nor do you know the day in which the Son of Man is going to come. But we know that there is coming a day when the trumpet of God is going to sound, and there is going to be the shout of the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the, the other believers in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. How do we know that it's a fact? Because God said it. And if God said it, folks, God is going to fulfill it. He's going to bring it to pass. It doesn't matter what the devil might say. It doesn't matter what the soothsayers might say. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. If it is not in line with the Word of God, it is not of God. It must line up with the Word of God because Jesus, the Son of God, God the Father, 
and the Spirit of God are all one in their triunity. And as they speak, they will speak in oneness. They will never disagree. They will ever bring everything into line. In the wisdom of God, it is the church that proclaims the word of God and the preaching and the teaching of his word that we declare that God is speaking. And I trust today that we can take confidence that when we have someone standing behind this podium or when you have a Sunday school teacher in our Sunday school classes, that when your teacher stands up, they are speaking as a spokesperson from God. There isn't a Sunday that I don't come up before here and my prayer is, God, we don't need to hear a sermon. We need a message. We need to hear something that is from the heart of God. And my prayer is, God, let me be your spokesperson. Let me be your spokesperson. Pastor Jeremy, as he ministers to the youth, he is God's spokesperson to the youth. And as you are ministering in your classes, you are God's spokesperson to the class that you are leading because God placed you where you are. And we have been prompted by the Spirit of God to be attentive to what God is saying and to speak as God would have us to speak. Together in the Word of God, filled with the Spirit of God, we can read it, discern rightly the voice of God. I want to repeat that. Together, in the Word of God, filled with the Spirit of God, we can discern rightly the voice of God. And sometimes it may take faith to accept the Word of God. That night at the altar in Hungry Horse, Montana, it took me a lot of faith because that was, I never even entered my mind about going into the ministry. I hadn't even thought about it. But yet, it was at that time, at that altar, that God used, and I don't know whether it was Roy Brewer or not, but he was one of our kids evangelists that were there many times. But it was God speaking through him that spoke to my life and called me in to do what God has wanted me to do. And it took faith. And so sometimes it may take faith for you to step out and do what God is speaking you or speaking to you to do but my encouragement would be when the voice of God speaks through the word, through creation through consequences through Christ, through the Bible, through the church whatever way he speaks let us be quick to say speak Lord your servant is listening Father this morning that is my heart's desire is that we would be a body of believers who would be ready to echo the, the cry of Samuel and saying, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And God, you had a work for him to do, and this was the beginning of what you were going to do in and through his life. But it was as he responded to your voice that it took place. And God, this morning, I just pray that our hearts and our minds would be open to what the Spirit would have to say unto the church. For your word says over and over and over again, he that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit would say. God, you've given us ears spiritually to discern the things which you would have for us. And let us be quick to respond. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And maybe there are some that are going through difficult times in their lives, and maybe you've been speaking into their lives, but they haven't been listening attentively, and maybe they have drawn a deaf ear to the voice of God, but the same you are speaking into their lives and, and imp impressing upon them to do what you would desire of them. God, I pray that you would melt the will and let it come in conformity to not our will, but your will, and that we would hear what the Spirit would say. For those that are viewing online, God, may the same be true of their lives. God, speak into their lives and help them to recognize 
that God, you're the same today as you were when you appeared to Moses or to Samuel, and you're still speaking today. Now, Lord, speak, for your servant is listening. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together this morning as we close. And as we just close in a course and then. But go with this idea. God is speaking in various ways. Be very attentive to what God is saying because these are very trying times and we need to hear the voice of God. Remember this morning the offering will be received in the baskets in the back. As you leave the sanctuary, they'll have baskets back there. Uh, there are other ways to give as we make known every week through our online giving or through the smartphone or through the Tidely um, app, but giving unto the church. This is the way God speaks to us is even in our ways of obedience to Him and in our obedience to giving. So God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much for recognizing my 50th birthday um, long ago, but that's all right. But um, I'll just stay that. And uh, but we love you. We appreciate it. And we'll just have brother, or Pastor Jeremy close us in a course and then prayer. You heard your children. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answered prayers back then. You will an answer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were providing. same God. You are the same God. You moved in power then. You don't move in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were a healer then. You are a healer now. You are the same message today, God. Thank you for speaking to us through pastor this morning. God, we know that you're the same God. You're the God we read about, and we're the God, you're the God that can do the same things for us. So God, as we leave this place, let us keep that in mind. Let us lean into you, God. Whatever you're doing, we want to be part of. So God, as you're touching lives, as you're moving through people, God, we want to be part of that. So use us mightily, and we thank you for it in your name. Amen. Amen. You guys are dismissed. Thank you for coming this morning.